It began as an idea. Take a viral video and refine it into a new combat sport. Many said it could not be done, but we believed in the process. From humble beginnings we grew, writing and refining the rules, hosting amateur events in bars and nightclubs, and developing the sport of slapping. During the pandemic, we were forced to produce our events in undisclosed locations. Warehouses, abandoned buildings, and empty event centers hosted Slap Fight Championship while millions of fans watched online. As the fan base grew, Slap Fight began hosting pay-per-view events and broadcasting internationally, spreading the sport to over 100 countries worldwide, continuing to build an audience for Slap Fight Championship. Now we have arrived, and we are no longer competing in undisclosed locations. After receiving over 1 billion viral views and hosting more events than all other slap organizations combined, we have become the top slap fighting promotion on the planet. With our loyal fan base in tow, we now embark on a new era in combat sports. This is Slap Fight. Lake of the Ozarks, the setting of the hit Netflix series, Ozark. We have traveled to Osage Beach, Missouri. Fighters from all over the country will descend on this lake to test themselves at the barrel, and we have invited 200 lucky fans to witness the spectacle. The fans have been enjoying their time at this breathtaking resort, rubbing elbows with their favorite slap fighters, but now it's time to fight. Tonight's undercard features three fights and showcases a few new faces and a Bad Blood rematch. Retired mixed martial artist Neanderthal makes his slap fighting debut tonight versus a 300 pound home wrecker from Team Hulk. With nearly 650 pounds of man meat at the barrel, this matchup will have slap fight fans on the edge of their seats. The Cannon returns to Slap Fight after a huge win over Shamokin Thunderclap at Slap Fight Rising. His opponent will be Casper Wyoming native The Crippler, looking to start his Slap Fight career with an upset of the Tennessee native. But first, a bad blood grudge match between Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo. Retired professional wrestler and Indianapolis native Maniac Matt will make his third appearance at the barrel tonight, stepping up to face his nemesis, Scrappy Doo. These two slappers became rivals when a backstage scuffle and some internet chatter prompted Slap Fight officials to offer a rematch of their battle from Slap Fight Rising. All right, we are back and we are ready to go. This first match, it's a bad blood rematch. Let's bring out the first competitor. He hails from Indianapolis, Indiana. He weighed in at 198 pounds. Please welcome Maniac Matt! There he is, folks. It's Maniac Matt, all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana, all retired right, professional wrestler. Moment. He is fighting out of Fulton, Missouri, fighting out of Team Tank. He weighed in at 116 pounds. He is Scrappy!
Happy Do has entered the event center. He is the local hero, lives about 45 minutes away from the inn at Grand Glaze, and he is ready to put in some work. Scrappy Doo and Maniac Matt have had a long standing rival, and tonight they hope to put an end to it. Once again, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds. All right, the fans here at the inn at Grand Glaze are rowdy. I can barely hear myself over the, over the crowd. And uh, I got to say, I'm so excited about this matchup. Scrappy Doo and Maniac Matt at the barrel now. As always, our lead official, Kyron Bowen, professional mixed martial artist. He's been our lead official for 19 of our 20 events. And tonight, our, our line official will be referee Q Davidson. Now, as Kyron Bowen goes over the rules with our competitors, I will tell you that each one of these competitors has been over the rules with the commission in the back. They're getting a quick once over and now the coin toss. And Kyron Bowen nails the coin toss. Unbelievable. Best coin toss in the business, Kyron Bowen. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, it looks like Maniac Matt has won the coin toss, and he will strike first. Matt's checking his placement. And here comes your wind-up, round one. Okay, not a bad slap. Looks like we've got a little bit of a dialogue here. Might have been a little bit of a questionable slap. We're gonna keep it going here. Maybe just a little bit of a scolding here from Kyron Bowen. Bottom of round one, Scrappy Doo, about to tee off. Scrappy Doo's using a technique devised by Biscuit. Oh, a great shot from Scrappy Doo. And this fight is officially underway. We're moving into round two. This is a bad blood grudge match. This is the second fight between these two. Their rivalry began after the slap fight Summer Smash 2022 when there was a little bit of internet chatter between Scrappy Doo and the daughter of Maniac Matt, which ended up in a grudge match, which Scrappy Doo won by split decision at the Summer Smash. These two immediately contacted slap fight officials and asked for a rematch, which you're seeing now. We're in the top of round two. Here's Maniac Matt with the windup. One, two, three. Oh, fantastic shot by Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo's bell is rung. He's gonna take advantage of his one minute break here. Talk to his corner man for a few seconds. Each one of our competitors does have a 60 second break between slaps to regain their composure and step back to the barrel. Let's go, Scrappy! That's one of the hardest shots I've seen Maniac Matt throw in this rivalry. And look at the intensity on Scrappy Doo's face. Nice shot from Scrappy Doo. Maniac Matt eats it. And he's going to stay in the pocket. Let's go, Maniac. Maniac Matt does have a little bit of support here in the room. Scrappy Doo, far more popular. Maniac Matt hails from Indianapolis, Indiana. Scrappy Doo from Fulton, Missouri. Round three. One, two, three. 
And another good shot from Maniac Matt. Okay, it looks like the officials are considering a violation here. Okay, it looks like they're considering a warning for clubbing here. I, I haven't heard if they've made this official yet or not. Some people in the crowd are talking about the violation. Uh, said it looks like he may have kicked the barrel. Uh, that is not a violation at slap fight. You can touch the barrel, move the barrel, but typically the barrel moves when you step as well. So uh, just the movement of the barrel is not a violation, but stepping is a violation. We go round three. And a nice, well-placed shot from Scrappy Doo. Again, Maniac Matt eats it. The crowd's giving Scrappy Doo a little bit of a golf clap here. I don't know if that's just kind of patronizing or what. I didn't think that was that great of a shot, to be honest. But uh, it did. It was in the right spot, at least. I feel that it probably had lots of hatred behind it. It just didn't quite get its point across. All right, lead official Kyron Bowen having a quick conversation with Matt. Maniac Matt's hands are like small mallets. I shook hands with him at the weigh-in last night, and it was, it was just like shaking hands with a stone. Getting slapped by Maniac Matt, I've heard, is like getting punched. That's a pretty good shot there. Maniac Matt putting in some good work here. It looks like we're going to step back to the barrel here. Maniac Matt wants to push the pace here. It looks like uh, Scrappy Doo's trying to draw out the, the match just a little bit. There is a 60 second optional break. Some of these fighters like to use that break as a strategy. Oh, and a nice shot from Scrappy Doo. Maniac Matt just keeps eating these shots. Maniac Matt's third time at the barrel. We've yet to see him knocked down or hurt. Scrappy Doo was in the uh, 2022 Summer Smash, and he was knocked out by uh, Raven from Team Destroyer. We're now in round five. Maniac Matt checks his placement. Another good shot. Scrappy Doo makes his stink face there for a moment. Okay, I can see line official Q Davidson has just warned Maniac Matt for stepping. He's explaining that Maniac Matt's right heel came off of the mat. And you can't step, pivot, or lift your heel off the mat when slapping. So it looks like that's going to be a warning for stepping. Okay, we've got our EMT at the barrel now talking to Maniac Matt. I can tell you that Maniac Matt does suffer from a nerve condition. It doesn't affect his competition at all. Uh, it does, uh, he does shake a little bit sometimes when he gets jazzed, but uh, it isn't an issue that will slow him down. It just sometimes is alarming to see. All right, so the medical team is discussing it now and it looks like there's no problem here. We're going to step right back into the action here. Scrappy Doo. Round, round five. Okay, that's a solid shot there. Not bad. Got a little bit of an issue here with his, his wrap around his wrist here. I think Scrappy Doo just uh, hitting him so hard his wrapping is coming off of his wrist. The competitors wear that tape around their wrist, not to protect their wrists from injury, but actually to help the officials and judges to see how deep their slaps are extending. You can you can slap the face and you can slap the chin, but you can't use the heel of your, your heel of your hand any deeper than the tip of the chin or your clubbing. Yeah, 
All right, here we go. We're going to keep moving here. This is round six, Maniac Matt. Here's your windup. Oh, and another good shot. Looked a little bit high, but it looks like it's going to go ahead and count. Maniac Matt's really putting in some work here. Scrappy Doo still in it. But I would say on the scorecards at this point, I would imagine that Maniac Matt does have the edge. Scrappy Doo staring bullets. Staring bullets through the face of Maniac Matt, who I think might be asleep. Oh, a nice shot from Scrappy Doo. And again, Maniac Matt just wakes up. Wow. Maniac Matt is a powerhouse middleweight. Uh, he's got a, a record at this point of uh, one and one, and I believe after tonight he's hoping to leave at two and one. Scrappy Doo has competed twice. He's got a record of one and one as well. Look at the forearms of Maniac Matt. They're about the size of the legs of Scrappy Doo. In fact, I thought that was his leg for a second, but then I realized that's probably in a One, two, three. Oh, and another big shot. And of course, Scrappy Doo looks at him like that didn't hurt a bit, but he didn't realize the 2.3 seconds where he was making the stink face. Holy smokes. Maniac Matt and Scrappy Doo. This is a rivalry that I never would have expected, but the fans seem to enjoy it. Maniac Matt, very upset about this. All right. I spoke to him last night. He feels like he's defending his daughter's One, honor. Two, three. And another good shot from Scrappy Doo, but Maniac Matt is displaying a great chin tonight. We are in round eight. A lot of intensity at the barrel. All right, Maniac Matt checks his placement here. Here's your wind up, round eight. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> Another good hard shot, but it looked like that one might have been a little bit of a club. And so the officials are going to call this as a clubbing penalty. So that will be a warning for clubbing for Maniac Matt. Maniac Matt with a long professional wrestling career. I've watched quite a few of his videos, quite a funny character, Maniac Matt, but he's been looking for something new to do for competition. He contacted Slap Fight, and uh, we thought, why not? We gave him a shot. We love Maniac Matt, and the fans seem to love him as well. But this guy has got an incredible chin. Here we go again. We are now at the bottom of round eight. Scrappy Doo winding up. Two, three. Oh, another good, well-placed slap by Scrappy Doo. And you can hear the folks here at the event center giving them a little golf clap here. That's not something that typically happens. It almost seems like maybe they're they're trying to just build him up because they realize this is not going well for him. One, two, three. And again, another well-placed slap. Scrappy Doo receiving two slaps in a row there. That's because Maniac Matt had a penalty for, for clubbing and he lost a turn. That puts him in a, a tough place here. We're going into round 10. We'll take a look here as referee Kyron Bowen struggles with the ring cards. He's put us back to round one. Oh, and now round 11. And back to round one again. Very exciting. Kyron Bowen traveling through time. Okay, we are now rolling into round 10. Someone has stolen our zero, folks. If you see our zero on the streets, please let me know. All right, here we go. We're rolling right back into the action here. This is the final round. Very close match. 
I would have thought Maniac Matt had the edge, but now with that stepping or excuse me, that clubbing penalty, that may change the judges' decisions. Oh, another powerful shot from Matt. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be a tough decision for our judges. Clearly Maniac Matt with the more power. Scrappy do with a cleaner fight. It all comes down to the bottom of round 10. Scrappy Doo's got an opportunity here. This is for all the marbles. And another good shot, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to make a difference. Fantastic fight. Our Bad Blood rematch is in the books. Scrappy Doo versus Maniac Matt. What a crazy little rivalry we've got going here. And as the judges deliberate, we're just going to go back to the barrel here and we're going to find out who pulled this off. I'm not sure who I'd give this one to. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give both of these fighters a big round of applause. We do have a winner. Tonight, Scrappy Doo is the winner. And it looks like Scrappy-Doo has taken a victory again just by fighting a clean fight. That brings Scrappy-Doo to 2-0 and on the rivalry. And uh, as they bring him back to the, the platform, we're going to go to our host, Dallin Getling. And uh, if we can get Scrappy back to the platform, we're going to go ahead and have a post-fight interview here. I'll take you down to the barrel. So... This was announced, come right here. This was announced as a, as a bad blood fight. Uh, you guys, this was not the first time you met, is that correct? That's right. How many times do you guys fight before? This is our second time. Second time, okay. But now, during the match, I saw some pretty mean looks from you. I saw some shaking your head, some smiling, that didn't hurt. And then at the end, I saw a fist bump. Did some respect get earned during that fight? Oh, for sure. Uh, Maniac Matt is a tough kid, tough kid. Right on. Well, that must mean you're just a little bit tougher. Congratulations. You got anybody you want, you want to shout out to? Um, everyone here, uh, thank you. Uh, my sister, uh, daughter that's here, my wife at home, uh, our foster kids. All right. Well, congratulations. I like a fist bump as well. Thank you, Scrappy Doo. Take care. MMA standout and Missouri native Neanderthal makes his long-awaited slap fighting debut tonight versus Team Hulk prodigy Homewrecker. Tipping the scales at nearly 625 pounds, this super heavyweight matchup promises fireworks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to bring out some big boys? All right, introducing first, fighting all the way from Dexter, Missouri. He is from Team Hulk and weighed in at a whopping 295 pounds. Please give it up for the home
and introducing his opponent, fighting out of Fredericktown, Missouri, at an even more whopping 323 pounds, he is Neanderthal! Fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. We'll see if they make it. All right, we are excited to have this matchup on the card. 650 pounds of competitor here nearly. On your left, we have Neanderthal. And on your right, home wrecker. Home wrecker from Team Hulk. Neanderthal is an independent fighter from here in Missouri. As always, our lead official for this fight will be referee Kyron Bowen. All right, lead official Kyron Bowen having a quick rules meeting with our competitors, and we're going to go right to the coin toss. Neither of these competitors have competed at slap fight or in the sport at all. This is a debut for both men. All right, here we go. It looks like Neanderthal has won the coin toss, and he has elected to slap first. You'll notice each of our competitors has a cotton ball in their ear. They all wear cotton balls in their ear to protect the eardrums from damage. <laughs> Let's go! And here we go with the go. top of round one. Neanderthal's gonna check his placement here. And here's your windup. A huge shot. Home record goes down. Oh my. Home record is on the mat. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight may be over. All right, he's back to his feet, but I cannot imagine that this match will continue. That was a bad knockdown. It looks like the doctor's having a conversation here. Home record seems like he may have pulled it together, but I'm not so sure. He does have 60 seconds to regain his composure. bit of sportsmanship here from Neanderthal and I guess he's gonna take his slap we are at the bottom of round one home record squaring off oh no that sounded like a club to me okay we're gonna have a warning here for clubbing and possibly straight to the penalty Okay, Neanderthal seems to be okay. Home wrecker was visibly hurt by that first slap. That's probably something to do with this club at the bottom of round one. Everyone in the event center is on their feet. This is an exciting match. Hope it gets to continue, but we want to make sure both fighters are healthy. Home record tells the official he's in it. 
Unbelievable. I can see the, the doctor is watching Homewrecker closely. He's right to the side of the platform here. But we're going to continue into round two. This is a super heavyweight matchup. One, two, three. Oh, he goes down again. Holy smokes. Okay, the Hulk has had to steady him. He is hurt. And even though he did not go to the mat, it will count as a knockdown because his corner man did have to steady him. Unbelievable heart on display by Homewrecker. At the weigh-ins last night, these two squared off and they put each other's hands up against each other's cheeks. And I saw something I've never seen before. Neanderthal's fingers wrapped from the heel of his hand at the chin all the way to the back of the head. Massive, massive hands, look like snow shovels. I can see here, Homewrecker's thinking about withdrawing from the fight. I'm not so sure I would stay in this fight either, but he's still in it at this point. And it looks like he may stay in the battle. Lots of concern from the EMTs and medical staff. But home record seems to be cognizant. Okay, he's going to take his slap. Here we go. We are in the bottom of round two. Unbelievable super heavyweight matchup. Here's your windup. Okay, not a great slap there. Sometimes when you get your bell rung early in the fight, it makes it a little bit difficult to be precise. Definitely not a great, not a great slap, but it was a, a somewhat of a slap. And I think that's a, 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 a pretty good indication that he's trying to be in the fight. He's trying to be competitive, but my gosh, he was really hurt in round one and round two. Referee Kyron Bowen taking just a few minutes here, a few extra seconds to go over the rules and refresh these guys. This is a debut for both fighters. Neanderthal, a former mixed martial artist. He knows how to distribute his weight to get power. Here we go, we are in round two. That was round three, pardon. The Hulk catches home wrecker again. Home wrecker. It looks like we're gonna stop this fight. That's three knockdowns. And we have a three knockdown rule here at Slap Fight Championship. Three knockdowns and that's a TKO. So we're gonna go ahead and announce the, the winner here. Neanderthal wins by TKO. This is a giant man and we look forward to seeing more from Neanderthal here at Slap Fight Championship. All right, uh, first, let me just, can you just hold your hand up there for a minute? Because I've got pretty big hands. <laughs> Holy cow. Those are some paws you got on there, brother. So, how's your chest? Uh, big and hairy. <laughs> that was a little personal. It's, but, it's all fine. So, so what I was asking, I don't think you got hit in the face, did you? No, nah, no, he caught me kind of in the neck on the second swing and, of course, crossed the chest on the first one. Right on, and, and I think that was because you knocked him silly on your first one, and he was just trying to recover, but. That's the whole plan. That's a good strategy, don't you think? Is that a pretty good strategy? Yeah. Well, congratulations, anybody you wanna give a shout out to while you're up here? Oh, uh, no, man, Jesus. Right on, man, all right. Take it, boom. The Neanderthal!
Fan favorite the Cannon returns to the barrel, looking for his second win after his career suffered a slow start due to a frustrating split decision loss and an injury from an illegal strike. The Tennessee slapper finally found his way to the win column at Slap Fight Rising and looks to build on his momentum tonight at Slap Fight 20. Standing in his way, however, will be retired kickboxer and mixed martial artist, The Crippler. The lightweight newcomer is looking to make a name for himself in the sport of slapping tonight with an upset over the popular veteran. Well, let's bring out the first fighter from Licking, Missouri. He weighed in at 115 pounds. He is the Crippler! There he is, folks, the Crippler, sort of in a perpetual state of confusion. I know the guy. He's from right down the road in Licking, Missouri. Retired mixed martial artist. This is his first foray into slap fighting, and he is excited to be here. He's been walking around the resort all weekend. He's just been smiling. He's excited. But he's got a tall, tall order in this fight tonight. His debut will be against the Cannon. From New Market, Tennessee. He weighed in at 158 pounds. He is Canada! And there he is, the Cannon, all the way from the great state of Tennessee. The Cannon coming off a big win in the main event of Slap Fight Rising, and he is excited to get back to the barrel as quickly as possible. Now, the Cannon is a fan favorite. He's very popular with the fan base at Slap Fight Championship, but he has only gotten one win. When he first began competing, he had a bad beat. He got a bad judge's decision against a, a, a veteran battle ax, and then in his second fight, he suffered an illegal strike and uh, there was a no contest. So this is his second attempt at a victory. Referee Kyron Bowen's gonna go over a quick rules meeting with our competitors and I can tell you that the Cannon, now with a record of one win, one loss, and one no contest, is anxious to get started and he cannot wait to put another W on his record. Now the Crippler, all the way from Licking, Missouri, which is every bit of a couple of hours drive, He's come here as a spoiler tonight, and he has made no bones about it. He is looking to knock the cannon out. It looks like we're about ready for the coin toss here, so I'll take you down to the barrel, referee Kyron Bowen. All right, tails. It looks like the coin toss has been won by, uh, by the crippler. It looks like, is he gonna refuse the first slap? No, okay, he's gonna take the first slap. Going to move the hair back from the ear of the cannon and expose the strike zone. And here we go. Here's the Crippler. Oh, the Crippler with some big, big power. Holy smokes. Now, I have to tell you, sometimes when there's an illegal strike, like a club, you can hear more of a thud than a slap. And I'm a little bit out of position. Someone walked in front of us here. But it did sound like a thud, almost like a clubbing. So we're going to stop here and uh, take a look and see what the, the officials have decided. Looking at the face of the cannon, he does seem to be okay. The crippler looks like it was completely accidental. And so it looks like they may just issue him a warning. He's definitely having a conversation with referee Kyron Bowen. And I see the cannon is joking with his corner man a little bit here, so he's definitely okay. i tell you what, this crowd is on their feet. This is an electric crowd here at the Inn at Grand Glaze. Uh, we have 200 lucky fans in the building. And I'd tell you, these little small shows are so much fun. All of the fighters get to hobnob with the, with the guests. They get to talk to the, the fans. And it's really been a good, good time this weekend. But now it's time to fight. And you can feel the tension and the electricity in the room. Now, our 60-second break should be just about over. I think they're giving Cannon just an extra maybe an extra minute here to recover from that clubbing, but 
it looks like we will continue with the match. In the event of a, a terrible clubbing like that, we do have the option to take a 15 or 20 minute break, but the cannon has refused that break and we're stepping right back to the action. Here we go. And the cannon with an insulting slap right across the jaw. Wow. The cannon has a lot of power in his last outing at the barrel. He had a three slap knockout and he's looking for less than three slaps for the knockout tonight. You can see the eyes of the crippler. He's realizing he's in a fight. I've seen this gentleman fight as a kickboxer and as a mixed martial artist. He is a tough guy, but slap fighting. Oh, he's confused on who to slap here. Oh, okay. Maybe he's just educating himself on the rules of the match. A little bit of confusion here. I'm not sure what's happening, but... We only have a few seconds left, and we'll go right back in. It's going to be the bottom of round two. All right, here we go. Let's go. And let's see. Let's see now if the Crippler can land a legal strike here. And another illegal strike from the Crippler. This is going to be a penalty for sure, and now the Crippler is going to lose a turn. It's not going to be a free slap for the cannon. It's going to be a penalty for the crippler. Now, what that means is the crippler will now lose his third round slap. That means the cannon will slap in round three and then immediately for round four. A lot of power from the cannon. I'm not so sure the crippler is going to be able to stand through two of these slaps. And that is why you've got to watch your penalties at Slap Fight Championship. It's very quiet in the event center. The Crippler's at the barrel, ready for these two slaps. And here we go. This will be a real good chin check for the Crippler. Here we go. Oh, a nice shot. Staggers the Crippler just a little bit, but doesn't cripple him fully. Okay, the Crippler's just asking referee Kyron Bowen to make sure his ear is still in place. Quick conversation with the medical team here. It looks like there's a little bit of concern. Now the Cannon still has one slap left. His round four slap is on deck. The Cannon gets fired up during these matches. You can see he's like a bulldog. He just kind of paces the platform is about eight feet wide and the cannon just sort of, he, he'll go about 15 miles in between rounds here, just back and forth on that eight feet. Okay, looks like the doc's gonna sit back down in his chair and I think we're gonna move forward in the match. The Crippler's got a big decision to make here. Is he gonna take this next slap or will he withdraw from the match? You can see the look on his face. He's considering both options. The cannon's still pacing, and the Crippler is back to the barrel. Oh, he's stepping back up. Let's go. All right, this will be round four. Yeah. <laughs> Referee Kyron Bowen looking for the cotton ball in the ear of the cannon. The cannon's too hairy. Cotton ball could be lost in there. Okay, here we go. This is round four. This will be the second slap in a row for the cannon. Bringing the crippler just a little bit closer. Checking his placement. Here's your wind up, round four. Oh, another big shot. And the crippler stays on his feet. Unbelievable. Okay, the Crippler still in it. We are in round four. The Cannon being cornered tonight by mixed martial artist Darius McDaniel. 
The Crippler being cornered by mixed martial artist Isaac Spencer. These are two certified cornermen from Sports Slap USA, our regulatory body. Veterans of, I would say, 10 or 15 slap events. Okay, now it seems as if we're taking every bit of our 60 second break here. I don't know if it's a strategy or if it's just because he's hurt. The Crippler still seems to have his sense of reason. He's got his feet underneath him, but he has taken some bombs. There's no way that he's ahead on the judges scorecards. He has a penalty and he's got some some big, big shots and one knockdown from being helped by his corner man. So here we go. He's going to deliver a slap now. And let's hope he can he can actually connect with the chin here or the cheek or at least the head. Oh, and he hits him in the top of the head. And I just have to say that seems like complete bullshit. The crippler already fouling twice. We're in round three. He has now punched in every illegal spot on the head. And at this point, I'm not so sure that the cannon's wife's not going to come running out of the crowd and attack him. The cannon's going to pace a little bit more. It looks like he's okay. Probably pissed off. That's the issue here. The crippler has taken some heavy, heavy shots. It's probably affected his accuracy. He's staying in the match, but I can see that the medical team has approached the platform again, and they're taking a good look at him now. Both fighters seem to want to continue. We're heading into round five. Here at the beautiful Inn at Grand Glaze, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, we've got a standing room only capacity crowd, and we are having a great time here this weekend. Tonight, these fights are being sanctioned by Sports Slap USA. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we're stepping back to the barrel. We're going to get a little bit of a longer fight here. Holy smokes, here we go. Here's your wind up, the cannon. Oh, my gosh, another big shot. And again, the crippler stays on his feet. Wow. Okay, the medical team's going to come back onto the platform, take another look at the Crippler. Asking him a few questions, taking a look at him here. At this point in the match, I don't see any opportunity for the Crippler to win the fight. So maybe withdrawing could be the smart move here. But again, this is Slap Fight Championship and anything can happen. I just believe that some things are just a little bit more logical. And there you go. There's another win for the Cannon. That was a strange little fight there, but it was fun to watch. Gut, his shoulder, he got hit everywhere. But he walks away with his second victory. Congratulations to the cannon. All right, I'm here with your winner, the cannon. You were looking pretty good tonight, man. Those, every slap that you landed looked like he was going to get knocked out. I don't know if it was the beard that was keeping him up, but, but finally the doctor stopped him because I don't know if he knew where he was at. Tell me, how did you get that technique down there? How did you get so much power? Well, I guess just the way I grew up. Yeah, you got two other brothers. He's got two other brothers coming up tonight. You got three of you, right? Yep. Do you guys do a lot of slap fighting at home? Yeah, we practice. Right on. <laughs> Loki, yeah, we practice. Right on, man. Well, any, anybody you want to say hi to? Uh, I want to say hi to my dad. Okay, go ahead. Hey, dad. Right on. <laughs> Thank you. The cannon. Show him those cannons. Right on.
Team Thunderclap lightweight, Karma returns to slap fight looking to bounce back from his loss at the 2022 Summer Smash. The Pennsylvania-based slapper sees his fight as an opportunity to finally find the win column. But facing him at the barrel will be Tennessee native and Team Cannon product, Runt, making his third stand at the barrel and hoping to end his losing streak with a dominant victory over Karma. Best fight coming up, so let's bring out the first competitor. He fights out of Team Cannon. He's in Tennessee, Kodak, Tennessee, weighted at 187. Please welcome Ron! And introducing his opponent, hailing from Shamokin, Pennsylvania, fighting out of Team Thunderclap. He weighed in at 184 pounds. He is Karma! Karma coming all the way from Shemokin, Pennsylvania, followed to the platform by his coach, Shemokin Thunderclap. And this is a fight that we have all been waiting for. We have been very excited about Runt versus Runt Karma. And Karma, the first fight on the main card. Runt and Karma has been a matchup that we've tried to make at Slap Fight Championship for about four events now. We're so excited to have it tonight on this card. Now we're gonna go right to the barrel here for the coin toss with referee Kyron Bowen. And while we're preparing for that, I can tell you that Runt has lost two fights, both of which were split decision losses, very close competitive fights. Karma has lost to Monkey Wrench, one of the new top contenders in the middleweight and light heavyweight division. These two men have had tough fights and each one of them is looking for their first victory tonight. Again, on your left, Karma, on your right, Runt. And it looks like the coin toss was won by Runt, and he's going to elect to have the first slap. Top of round one. Okay, Runt's going to get the first fight of our main card underway. Here's the windup. Oh, a big shot! Holy smokes. Karma took a big, big shot there. It looks like referee Kyron Bowen is having a conversation here. Conversation with... Okay, yes, I just got confirmation here. Referee Kyron Bowen is gonna issue a warning, a warning for clubbing here against Runt. Now, Runt is not a dirty fighter. That was definitely accidental, and it didn't look like it did enough damage to take a mandatory break here. Okay, looks like we're gonna go right back to the, to the barrel here. And this is the bottom of round one. one two, Here we go. Three, oh, and a big eight. shot to the eyeball. Okay, and it looks like we're going to issue a warning for clubbing. There's going to be a warning for clubbing on that match, on that uh, round, excuse me. One warning for clubbing for Runt. Excuse me, for Karma and one warning for clubbing for Runt. Oh. Round two. two three. Oh, that was very ugly. It looked like we got a little bit of a flinch there from Karma and a little bit of a sloppy slap there from Runt. The officials are gonna have a conversation about it real quick here. Okay, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and let the action continue. 
Stern talking to by referee Kyron Bowen. But we're going to continue. We're now at the bottom of round two. Oh, and a fantastic slap from Karma. Again, Karma does train with Shimokan Thunderclap in Shimokan, Pennsylvania. Shimokan Thunderclap is the master of the iron palm technique, and you can see Karma using it tonight. Runt trains with Team Cannon in Tennessee. Round three. Oh, and Runt knocks the cotton ball into the fourth row. Karma takes the shot. Shimokan Thunderclap just reminding Karma that he looks like a young Dana White. But a high end one. Karma back to the barrel. Here's the wind up. Round three. Oh, that's a good slap. Karma putting some big work in here. You can see a big improvement in his game since his last performance. But Run Eats It stays in the pocket. We're going to go right into round four here. Run checks his placement. Referee Kyron Bowen says, man, you've got tiny hands. Okay, and here we go. Oh, a big shot. Shimokan Thunderclap sprints to steadiest fighter and accidentally touches him, giving him a knockdown. Shimokan Thunderclap has touched his fighter. That means he has one knockdown. Referee Kyron Bowen explaining that to the fighter now. You've got to be very careful with your penalties and your corner men at Slap Fight Championship. All right, Karma's going to wind up here. And another good shot from Karma. I tell you what, Karma looks great tonight. One of my favorite things about watching a Karma fight is the facial expressions he makes before the slap. Now take a look at it here. This is round five. Now watch how he makes every facial expression possible before the slap lands. I love it, but holy smokes, that was a good slap. Runt is putting in some work as well. I know Runt has been training with the Cannon and Monkey Wrench. They've been training every day for this event. He wanted this fight with Karma badly. Karma's been training in Pennsylvania. Tennessee versus Pennsylvania. What an interesting matchup here. It's also kind of strange. I feel like a lot of this might have something to do with the hair. All right, here we go. He's going to check his placement here. Round five. Winding up again. And Karma's putting in some good, solid shots tonight. Very excited to see his improvement. Okay, here we go. Round six. Runt. Winding up. Oh, my gosh. Runt does some damage with that one. Now, Karma's going to try to stay in the pocket here, but I can tell from my seat that he's a little bit rattled, and so can Shimokan. Shimokan's actually trying to get him to take the break here, and he refused. Okay, I guess he's okay. He's going to go into round seven here. Okay, seems like Karma saw a shiny object here. Okay, it seems as if there was a penalty here. A lot of confusion here at the barrel. There's a lot of confusion of what's happening. And yeah, I, I, I'm not so sure whose turn it is here. We're having a conversation and it looks like they have given the penalty to run and Karma will now take another slap. This is a game changer here. Oh my gosh. Runt putting in some great shots here. There's got to be something about the ear canal of Karma. He can't seem to keep his cotton ball in place. I don't know what they've done to bore that ear canal out, but good Lord, that's probably something we'll never see again in our lifetimes. One, two, three. Oh, Karma back in it with a nice shot. Runt's going to eat the shot and stay at the barrel. You can see a little bit of swelling here on the left cheek of Runt. A little bit of swelling all around the top of the head of Karma, but I think he had that when he got here. One, two, three. Oh! 
Karma dazed again. At this point in the match, I think Runt is clearly the winner on the scorecards. There are two rounds left for Karma to make some changes here. Right, Shimok and Thunderclap fingering the ear hole of Karma. All right, here we go. Back to the barrel for round eight. Another good shot there from Karma. A little bit high, but still legal. <laughs> Enjoyable little fight here to watch. I don't know if we're going to see a knockout, but we did see a lot of good slaps. All right, here we go as your wind up. And another great shot by the man bun. Fantastic. Karma's going to stay in the pocket. I'm impressed here with his ability to take damage. He's going to stay in the pocket and immediately return fire. A little show of sportsmanship here by both competitors. And now Karma with the wind up. Okay, that was a close one. Not a great slap. Didn't do a lot of damage, and it was a questionable slap. But it looks like as we roll into round zero, oh, round 10, hey! Referee Kyron Bowen nailing the flip cards. Holy smokes! All right, we all had a good laugh, but there are two men in a big battle at the barrel. Oh no, big shot! Karma's hurt! For just a second, his eyeballs went in different directions, but I think they're back to the middle. Yes, both, both eyeballs back to the barrel. Karma's going to square up here. Last slap of the fight. Oh, another kind of crazy slap. I think we know what happens here. The judges are going to deliver the decision, and it looks like most likely we've got a win here for Runt. But a fantastic little fight from both of our competitors. Let's listen in. Let's give him one more big round of applause. They made it to 10 rounds. There can be only one winner, and that winner tonight is Ron! Another show of sportsmanship by our competitors. Quick photo with our beautiful ring girl, Carrie. And Dallin Getling is going to come in for the post-fight interview. I'm here with the winner, Runt. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I was excited for this fight. Karma's a strong dude. Yeah, I can understand everything you said, so that's a good sign. Because I'm not sure. He had some swelling. I think we'd maybe be able to tell a little bit if he was talking. You guys went back and forth, but I think that all your shots were doing a little bit more damage. Did you ever feel like, oh, man, I'm in a little bit of trouble when he was hitting you? Yeah, I did about in the fourth or fifth round. Fourth or fifth round. You made it all the way to ten. And so did he. Great job. Anybody you want to say hi to? I want to say thank you for everybody showing up, supporting us, everybody at Slap Sport USA and Slap Fight Championship. Right on, man. Well, go celebrate with your fans. Thank you. Right! Team Rocky middleweight, the Slim Reaper, is making his slap fighting debut tonight versus one of the most popular new fighters to enter the sport this season, Shamokin Thunderclap. Thunderclap made a huge impression on slap fight fans with knockouts of The Butcher and The Guardian, but suffered a loss in the main event of Slap Fight Rising and seeks retribution at Slap Fight 20 versus the Slim Reaper.
ladies and gentlemen. And goes Blake Hyde. Our host, Dallin Gedling, oh, fumbling with his cell phone. Slim Reaper! Slim Reaper coming out. Let me tell you, Dallin Gedling, he's a good friend of Slap Fight. He's been with us as a correspondent since Slap Fight 4. And he is the new host of our new series, Car Jitsu. We're beginning a new series on YouTube, Car Jitsu. You're going to see plenty of things uh, uh, advertising Car Jitsu on our social media. And you'll see our good friend, Dallin Gedling, as the host of the show. Now, as you look up here, you can see a new face to Slap Fight. This is the Slim Reaper. The Slim Reaper is a Missouri-based, excuse me, an Arkansas-based fighter who trains with Team Rocky. Team Rocky Moore bringing in his first student of the game, the Slim Reaper. And I have to tell you, this is an exciting character. I cannot wait to see him fight. And now introducing his opponent, fighting from Team Thunderclap. All the way from Shemokin, Pennsylvania, he weighed in at 193 pounds. He is Shemokin Thunderclap! And here he is making his way into the event center. One of the more popular fighters of 2022. It is Shemokin Thunderclap. Shemokin Thunderclap, the coach of Team Thunderclap out of Shemokin, Pennsylvania. We've seen some of his fighters over the last couple of events, but Shemokin Thunderclap himself has suffered a bad loss over the course of the last few months. This is his opportunity to get back into the win column, but he's got a tall order tonight with Slim Reaper. As Shemokin makes his way onto the platform, you can see the Slim Reaper staring bullets. The Slim Reaper and Thunderclap. All right, now we do have no coin toss for this particular fight, and that is because the Slim Reaper did miss weight by four pounds. He weighed in at 204 instead of 199.9. So, Shemokin and Thunderclap will have the first slap. Referee Kyron Bowen explaining to the competitors that they can tuck their chins, but they cannot touch their chest with their chins. Oddly enough, they both showed up with the same hat, looking like some sort of a breakdance combo. And here we go. Shemokin Thunderclap checking his placement, and this is round one. Shemokin with an illegal strike right off the bat. Clubbed him in the neck. You can tell that was an accidental, but goodness gracious, that's that's rough. Right off the bat, Slim Reaper's going to go ahead and decline the, uh, the, the break. It's a 15-minute optional break anytime you receive a club in the first round. Slim Reaper seems to be okay. Here he is lining up. Round one. One, two, three. Oh, my gosh. Slim Reaper with a nice shot. Wow. All right, we've got a fight here. Slim Reaper with a clean shot. Shemokin Thunderclap eats it. He's going to take advantage of his 60-second break here. And Slim Reaper is wired up, jumping up and down, jogging a little bit in place. Shemokin Thunderclap stepping back to the barrel. He's decided to wear his glasses. I think those are his glasses. They sort of look like they could be his dad's glasses. We'll see. One, two, three. Oh, Shemokin Thunderclap. He slaps so hard he almost steps, and then he almost falls into the great abyss. I don't know what that was, but again, it looked like a breakdance move. Shemokin Thunderclap looking like a slap scientist up here with these glasses on. Quick conversation with his coach, and Slim Reaper is back to the barrel. You can see our staff and crew tonight are wearing Scrap Soldier t-shirts, Scrap Soldier clothing. You can find them at ScrapSoldierClothing.com. One of our newest sponsors. They're fantastic. We've worked with them for years now. Oh, Shemokin Thunderclap takes a seat. Holy smokes. A big, big shot from the Slim Reaper. And Shemokin Thunderclap is still on the mat. He's having a conversation with the medical team. He seems to be cognizant, but he was absolutely rocked. 
Okay, he's having a conversation with the medical team. Seems like he's okay. Whether or not he will continue is the question. He is smiling. I know Shamok and Thunderclap well. He does like to get slapped in the face, and he doesn't mind taking a shot like that. So I expect he will continue. But that is only if the officials and the medical team allow it. Now, while they're having that conversation, I will repeat, Scrap Soldier Clothing, we've dealt with this company for years and years, almost a decade, with some of our mixed martial arts promotions and kickboxing promotions. And tonight, they have joined us at Slap Fight Championship, and we're so glad to have them. ScrapSoldierClothing.com and take a good look at what they've done in the industry for MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, and now slap fighting. Great people, great clothing. Check them out, folks. They're our good friends, Scrap Soldier Clothing. Okay, Shimokin seems to be okay. He's having a conversation with the official, but the medical team seems to have some concerns here. They just want to make sure he's okay. Very impressive slap from the Slim Reaper. You can see the Slim Reaper's excited. He doesn't quite know if the fight's over yet or not. He's trying to stay in the zone, but it's tough. Sometimes you want to celebrate. Sometimes you want to step back in there. Shimokin's 60 seconds is over, and now it's time for him to make a decision. Oh, my. Shimokin has decided to continue. Of course, the crowd is in support of that. I can tell you the medical team has surrounded the platform now, and they are watching him closely. Shimokin's a southpaw. Here's his windup. Oh, a shot from Shimokin, and Slim Reaper is hurt. Slim Reaper stays on his feet, but he is visibly affected by that slap. What a fantastic turnaround for Shimokin Thunderclap. Holy smokes. This is the beginning of a fantastic fight. These two guys have been sizing each other up all weekend here at the resort. Last night at the weigh-ins, there was a little bit of talk. Fantastic. It's so good to see the Slim Reaper at Slap Fight Championship. Team Rocky has definitely got a valuable prospect here. Shimokin Thunderclap is ranked in the top 10 pound for pound on the planet, so he is no slouch. And let's see if he can take another one of these big shots. Another south, Paul. Here we go. And Shimokin Thunderclap goes down again. This might end the fight. Slim Reaper is in the zone. Holy smokes. Again, Shimokin Thunderclap is awake. He's speaking to the medical team. And I can tell you that he's going to try to continue this fight. But the medical team may have other plans. We're just going to have to take a few seconds here, find out what's going on. This is an interesting matchup. We've got two southpaws. Both with cool hats on. I think this might be the end of the match. Oh, my gosh. Shimokin Thunderclap having a hard time keeping on his feet. They're going to call this fight, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go down to the barrel for the announcement of the winner. Wow, what a debut by the Slim Reaper. He took out one of the faces of Slap Fight Championship in under four rounds by TKO. Fantastic. Our ring girl, Carrie, is going to give him his medal, take a quick photo. And then our host, Dallin, the secret weapon, Getling, will have a post-fight interview with this new I'm slap fight the star. The Slim Reaper. I don't think I'll ever forget that name again. Very <laughs> impressive. Now, you you might have got a little ahead of yourself, and you were celebrating because you he didn't look like he was going to get back up. But not only did he get back up, but I think he rocked you a little bit. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He rocked me pretty good. I give him that. That, that second hit, that second hit, kind of rocked my world. So, yeah, for him to recover and then deliver that kind of a smack surprised me. But you got your bearings. You came back at him, knocked him right back down again, and that was all she wrote. How do you feel? I feel great, man. Like I've been waiting to do this for a long time. I mean, a long time. And to all my haters out there, I just want y'all to know, that's what happens. That's what happens. When you hate, you get knocked out. That's what happens. All right, man. Will you go ahead and go celebrate with those people you came with? Congratulations. You want to say something? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to shout out to my daughter. I love you, Trinity, very much. This is all for you, baby girl. All right. Thank you, brother.
They can. The Slim Reaper! Undefeated light heavyweight slappers, Team Cannon's Monkey Wrench and Team Tank's Biscuit will face each other in a light heavyweight elimination match to see which of them will move one step closer to the light heavyweight championship held by Wolverine. Well, let's bring him out here. Our first fighter fighting out of Fulton, Missouri, fighting out of Team Tank. He weighed in at 216 pounds. He is Biscuit! There he is, ladies and gentlemen. He is a local fighter from about 45 minutes away in Fulton, Missouri, where he trains with the legend Frank the Tank. This is Biscuit. Biscuit is an interesting character, very funny, laid back guy, but he loves to compete. When we first signed Biscuit to Slap Fight, he was training for his first mixed martial arts fight. And after competing at Slap Fight, he decided that he would rather commit his time to perfecting his skills at the barrel. All right, let's bring out his opponent. He's coming all the way from New Market, Tennessee, fighting out of Team Cannon. He weighed in at 213 pounds. Please welcome Monkey Wrench! And now you're getting a look at Monkey Wrench. Every time we've seen him in the past, he's had an incredible quaff. I think he had 37 pounds of hair last night at the weigh-ins, they shaved his head and shaved his beard, and now he comes in here looking like a hillbilly Andre Orlovsky. Monkey Ranch is from Team Cannon. This is quite possibly the cleanest fighter in the league. He has now fought three times without a single penalty. He's won three fights, three and zero, oh, and he's Biscuit looking for a shot at the Monkey title. Ranch. All right, now we're back to the barrel with lead official Kyron Bowen. He's gonna have a quick rules meeting with our competitors and then we're gonna have a coin toss. Again, I will remind you that Biscuit is undefeated at the barrel at light heavyweight. Monkey Wrench is undefeated at middleweight. This is Monkey Wrench's first foray into the light heavyweight division, excuse me. And he is hoping to move himself one step closer to the title fight with Wolverine. All right, heads, it looks like Monkey Wrench has, oh, excuse me, he's lost the coin toss. Biscuit is going to slap first, and here we go. This is an elimination match. I'm very excited to see what happens here. One of these guys' undefeated record will end tonight, now. One, two, three, four. 
Biscuit with a big shot, and Monkey Wrench is hurt. We have never seen this before. Monkey Wrench has staggered. His corner man did not touch him, so there is not a knockdown, but that was quite possibly the first time that we have ever seen Monkey Wrench on the ropes. He's going to step back to the barrel. He's already shaken off the cobwebs, but holy smokes, that was a big shot. Okay, he's second-guessing that. He's going to come get a little drink here, have a conversation with his corner man, and you can see Biscuit showing no emotion. Biscuit is a crazy guy. He's got a great personality, but when it's time to compete, he is ready to compete. Now, here we go. Monkey Wrench is going to deliver his first blow. Look at the forearms of Monkey Wrench. He looks like Popeye. Kind of a hairy Popeye. Here we go. Oh, a big shot from Monkey Wrench, and Biscuit eats the shot. Oh, no. Okay, referee Kyron Bowen is going to issue a warning for flinching. Wasn't much movement, but he must have seen something that we did not see. Just a flinch in general is not a penalty. It's only a penalty if it affects the slap. Here we go, round two. Oh my gosh. Another big shot from Biscuit, but that one didn't do nearly as much damage. Kind of a weird little gangster lean there from, from Monkey Wrench, but I, I don't know that that was much more than technique. From where I'm sitting, I can see Monkey Wrench face, and he is upset about that first slap. He just took a little walk around the competition area. I don't think he needed that break. I think he's just frustrated. Here we go, round two. Monkey Wrench checks his placement. Here's the windup. And another good shot from Monkey Wrench. Doesn't seem like there's enough power there to hurt Biscuit, but that's not the way Monkey Wrench competes. Monkey Wrench is a point fighter. He wins his fights by unanimous decision. Okay, Stern talking to by our lead official, Kyron Bowen. Just a quick lecture about slap placement. And here we go, Biscuit with the wind up. Oh, a big shot from Biscuit and Monkey Wrench felt that one. I have never seen this type of result from Monkey Wrench taking a slap. I can see it in his eyes. He's a little bit concerned, but he can pull this together. Monkey Wrench taking some deep breaths here, talking to his corner man, pulling himself together. Stepping back to the barrel and then away again and then back again. Playing with my emotions. Something heavy on the mind of Monkey Wrench. He's going to step back to the barrel here. The bottom of round two. One, two, three. Good shot from Monkey Wrench. A little bit of power, but again, not enough to take a light heavyweight off of his feet. This is a 10 round fight. I can tell you now that Monkey Wrench intends to land 10 clean slaps and he hopes that his chin holds up and Biscuit makes a mistake. Here we go, round four. Oh, another big shot. Monkey Wrench has some spit fly to third and fourth row. One lucky fan goes home with just a little bit of Monkey Wrench DNA. Okay, I can see Monkey Wrench again in his corner. It looks like he's okay, a little frustrated. But we've seen him take big shots before, and it looks like he's going to eat that one as well. All right, it's time to progress here, and I don't know where Biscuit maybe went to the bathroom, but he's back. All right, another southpaw. He's going to wind up here. Oh, and that was a fantastic slap. That may be the best slap that I have seen from Monkey Wrench since he signed with Slap Fight. Going to replace his cotton ball, and he's going to step right back in it. We are halfway through the match. No clear winner. 
I would give the edge to Biscuit. Oh my gosh. All right, Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench is upset. I think he's talking to the... Com okay, I'm listening in here. It seems like he's telling lead official Kyron Bowen that he insists that that was a club. I will tell you, some, I've been in uh, combat sports for about 20 years, and I can tell you that sometimes you get hit at one part of the body and you feel it in another part. It may not have necessarily been a club, but he definitely felt it in his jaw. All right, Team Cannon Light Heavyweight, Monkey Wrench. We're in round five. And another good slap, but again, doesn't take, doesn't take Biscuit off of his feet. Again, Biscuit trains with Frank the Tank, legendary slapper. He'll be in our main event this evening. One, Biscuit winding two, up. Three. Well, that was an interesting slap there. There wasn't a lot of a pop to it. It was a legal slap, but it didn't seem to do much damage. Not nearly as much power as in the beginning of the fight. Our lead official, Kyron Bowen, is sponsored by Sangamon Watches. Sangamon Watches, they take care of Kyron Bowen in his mixed martial arts and his slap fighting career. And they sponsor our timepiece for our pay-per-view events on fight. This is our 20th event with Slap Fight Championship. 20 events and we've got some big announcements coming in the in the next two weeks One, follow us on social two, media three, oh man another fantastic slap from monkey wrench but again biscuit eats it biscuit's a big boy part part-time musician father Okay, not bad. Monkey Wrench is starting to absorb these fight these slaps. Monkey Wrench from Sevierville, Tennessee. Biscuit from Fulton, Missouri. Okay, we're having a conversation here. Lead official visited the corner. I think we've got a penalty here. We have a stepping violation and loss of turn. We have a stepping violation, apparently. Okay, I've just been informed, yes, there was a stepping violation. And Monkey Wrench is now going to deliver another slap. Oh my gosh! Now that was a game changer right there. That was a big, big shot. That is the first time I've seen Biscuit hurt. Now, because of that stepping violation, I believe Biscuit has sacrificed his round eight slap. And that means that Monkey Wrench will have another slap immediately. Here's your windup. No break for Biscuit. Oh my gosh, a little bit high, but it's gonna count. And now this fight is anybody's match. Holy smokes. Both of these fighters are hungry for a title shot at light heavyweight. They are both moving up the rankings quickly, and tonight one of them will pass the other as the leading contender for that next title shot. Biscuit's having a private conversation with his corner man. Typically he's cornered by Frank the Tank, but Frank is backstage preparing for his main event fight tonight with the Hulk. Okay, Biscuit's back at the barrel. We are in round nine. He's taken two shots. He's ready to deliver. Oh, false start. And we're going to reset. Okay, that was a good slap, but we have now seen Monkey Wrench fully recover from those first two rounds, and he's back at the barrel at full capacity. He's gone back to his corner. He's taking his, his break. I think he heard me say that he turned right around and went back to the barrel.
good shot from Monkey Wrench. He may be climbing from the loss to the win here. Rolling into round 10. This is the last round of the contest. Here we go. Okay. Good body of work there from Biscuit. We don't know if it's enough to win the match or not. We've got one more slap here and then we'll go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. Very close fight. This is a nail biter. I feel bad for the loser of this fight, but I'm sure we'll see them on one of the future cards. The winner will move up the rankings. Okay, a great slap. My hat is off to both of these competitors. That was a fantastic match. And it looks like that match is gonna go to the scorecards. All right, as our judges deliberate, I will take you down to the barrel with our announcer, Dallin, the secret weapon, Gatling. One more fight that went the distance and here for both fighters. Yeah! This was a close one. We do have the winner and he is Monkey! Monkey Wrench walks away with a razor thin decision. Fantastic fight by both competitors, and we will see Biscuit again at the barrel, I promise you. Our beautiful ring girl, Carrie, gonna go ahead and give away the medal, and then Dallin will take Monkey Wrench back to the barrel for the post fight interview. All right, brother, that one was too close for me to call, man. That was back and forth. Great battle. How you feeling? Dude, that hurts so much. I got stuff on the inside of my mouth that's supposed to be one place and it's not. Yeah. yeah. Dude, biscuit hit so hard. I won't do that again. You, you, this, is, this is a one and done? Yeah. Well, you did it, though. You can always say you did it. It's off your bucket list. I did, yep. Yeah. He, he, uh, he gets props all the way. What makes it easier is that you got the W. So congratulations. Anything you want to say to anybody? You, you earned it just by coming up here and getting smacked in the face, brother. Praise Jesus, man. All right. Thank you. Monkey Ranch.
Rocky Moore has returned to Slap Fight Championship to stake his claim as one of the pioneers of slap fighting. After making his debut at Slap Fight 3, Rocky faced some of the biggest names in the sport before his retirement in 2019. His opponent, the Bayou Bastard, entered the light heavyweight division during the Adrenaline Tournament and has carved out a career for himself, winning six of his past seven matches and exposing himself to the fans as a top contender. Rocky looks to steal the Bastard's momentum by correcting the mistakes that cost him a razor-thin split decision in their last fight at Slap Fight Rising. Let's bring out our first fighter, fighting out of Atkins, Arkansas. He weighed in at a whopping 250 pounds. Please give it up for Rocky Moore. The original bad boy of Slap Fight Championship, it's Rocky. Rocky's been with Slap Fight Championship since our third event back in 2018. He has fought almost everybody at the top of the rankings. He's been away for about two years. He returned at Slap Fight Rising where he faced the Bayou Bastard and lost because he lifted his heel at the end of the match and received a stepping penalty. Otherwise, that matchup was his victory. His opponent, all the way from Tarantown, Louisiana, he weighed in at 218 pounds. He is Ricky, a.k.a. the Bayou Bastard. And there he is, the Bayou Bastard, one of the most popular fighters in the history of Slap Fight Championship. He has a record of seven wins and two losses and he has turned himself from a super fan to a professional slap fighter. But tonight, he faces the fighter who has been his toughest opponent to date, Rocky Moore. At their last fight, it was a 10 round matchup. Rocky Moore was running away with the fight, landing far more power shots. But at the end of the match, he suffered a penalty and lost the judge's decision. And he has been sick over that mistake. Ricky offered him a rematch, and we decided to make it happen tonight at Slap Fight 20. And so here's the coin toss. All right, it looks like Ricky has won the coin toss, and he will slap first. All right, Ricky's corner man a little bit late to the platform. Internet personality Adam the Stink Mink in the corner for Ricky. Again, this is a 10 round scheduled fight. The Bayou Bastard in black and Rocky Moore in white. Ricky wins the coin toss. And here's the wind up round one. All right, a little confusion there with the judges, but here we go. This is round one, the Bayou Bastard squaring up. And here's the wind up. Oh, a big shot from Ricky. And Rocky eats it and stares him down. Now in the past, this would have been the moment where Rocky would have blown a kiss, but this is a different Rocky Moore. Rocky Moore has his mind set on earning a rematch with Wolverine. He needs a win tonight. Oh my gosh. Rocky Moore with a club and Ricky seems to be okay. But our lead official, Kyron Bowen, is going to have a conversation with Rocky here. From where I'm sitting, it looks like an accidental clubbing, but it was a clubbing. Now, Ricky does have the opportunity here to have a four, excuse me, a 15 or 20 minute break just to recover from the clubbing, but it looks like he's going to decline that break and stay in the fight. 
Ricky loves the fans, and the fans love Ricky. All right, we are in round two. Ricky's going to check his placement. Okay, not a bad slap. A little bit clubby there. Okay, they're looking at it, but I'm, I'm sure they're going to let that slide. It's just a tiny bit of a club there. Yeah, okay, we're going to go on in. We're going to go on into round, bottom of round two. Oh, my gosh, Rocky with a big shot. The Bayou Bastard was hurt, but he's already back to the barrel. Holy smokes. Now, one thing we all know is that Ricky has an incredible chin, but we also know that this is a different Rocky Moore. He's been away for two years, and he has gained an incredible amount of mass. 250 pounds, Rocky Moore. The Bayou Bastard barely made weight for this heavyweight fight. The Bayou Bastard weighing in at the limit. Okay, we've got a stepping warning here for Rocky Moore. I know he doesn't like that. It's just a warning. One more violation and he will lose a turn. Ricky's nursing his shoulder here. We'll have to see how that develops. We are in round three. One, Ricky's winding up. Two, three. Oh, and he caught Rocky in the nose. This happened in their last fight as well. Lead official Kyron Bowen giving him just a little bit of a stern talking to. But I think we're going to keep moving right on in the match. We're in round four. Rocky's pissed. Oh, my gosh. Rocky with another big shot. Clean shot. The Bayou Bastard felt it, but he wants his cotton ball back. Taps it on his chest, back in the ear hole. All right, at this point, there is no doubt that Rocky Moore is getting the better of these exchanges. Rocky Moore is a fantastic slap fighter with lots of experience. And he is back at the barrel with a vengeance. He has his mind set on a rematch with Wolverine. The only way for that rematch to happen is if Rocky can defeat the Bayou Bastard tonight. Here's the windup. Round four. Ricky's shots are a little bit high here. Okay, I think they're going to issue a warning here. It seems to me that Ricky is now being issued a warning for clubbing. His shots are just a little bit high. Okay, looks like he's been issued a warning. That's just a warning. If, if he violates the rules again, he will lose a turn. Oh my gosh, Rocky Moore with a huge slap. The loudest slap of the night so far. Rocky Moore, holy smokes. Okay, the Bayou Bastard realizes he's in trouble. And Rocky Moore realizes that he's got a fish on. Little bit of concern on the face of Ricky. Oh, I stand corrected. It looks like Ricky had been given a penalty. Rocky's going to slap twice in a row here. That means Ricky, Ricky must have lost a turn. Due to clubbing. Okay, Gallon Getling, our, our uh, announcer, has just informed us that there was a clubbing penalty and that Ricky did lose a turn. So, no round five for Ricky. Oh, no. Okay, now judging from the sound of that slap, that was a club. Landed with a thud instead of a slap. And lead official Kyron Bowen is discussing that with the other officials. We have a warning for clubbing against Rocky. One warning for clubbing. If that was the second one, so now he loses a turn. All right, you heard it yourself. This is the great equalizer at Slap Fight Championship. Now Rocky is going to lose a turn. That's going to even up the scorecards here. And now it's going to come down to who fights the cleanest fight and throws the most power. Ricky's got a big opportunity here. Oh my gosh, Ricky staggers Rocky just a bit. Rocky knows the judges are watching. Rocky is a gamer. 
He doesn't want to show any weakness here, but I saw it in his eyes, and he just staggered a bit as he stepped back to the barrel. All right, Ricky with his second slap here. He's going to make the most of this. And Rocky stays right in the pocket. Well played, Rocky. At this point in the match, we... have we... a warning for stepping. Okay, now Ricky has stepped. They called a warning on Ricky. Very close fight, just like their first match. And Rocky Moore again with a good shot. Rocky Moore is a scary looking slap fighter. He's got good power. I see a little bit of swelling on the face of Ricky. Ricky's having a conversation with Adam, his corner man. Adam the Stink Meek, professional mixed martial artist and slap fight corner man. Now Ricky's having a, a talk with Adam, but it looked like they were laughing. So I doubt he's gonna withdraw here. It looks like he's gonna stay in the match. Rocky also lost another round for clubbing. Oh no. Okay, we have looked at the replay and there has been a clubbing penalty issued. Rocky will now lose another turn. Oh my. Okay, Rocky takes that. And the Bayou Bastard goes back to get slapped. I think it may be another slap for Ricky. Okay, no, I guess that was. We got a little bit of confusion here. We have another stepping violation. Oh, no. I understand now what's happened. Ricky has now stepped and lost his extra turn. So now Rocky has a good opportunity here. Rocky Moore has an opportunity. Oh my gosh, big meat hook across the face of Ricky. And I can tell on the face of the Bayou Bastard that he's a little bit concerned. Okay, the officials are discussing, looking at the replay. And we've decided to move forward. I believe it's round eight. Rocky with another solid shot. Ricky smiles at the audience. What you're seeing here, friends, is two gamers at the barrel. Both of these men have been hurt during this match, and neither of them wants the audience or the judges to see it. Earlier in the match, Ricky was nursing his right shoulder. Rocky had a little bit of an issue with his hand in previous matches. And if this is a battle of attrition, here we go. Okay, Ricky slaps Rocky in the eyeball. It was a clean shot, just a little high. They're discussing it again. They're gonna let it stand. Rocky, round nine. Okay, so we have a little bit of an issue here with Rocky slaps. We have another clubbing by Rocky. And what's happening here, I'm seeing it myself, Rocky is cupping his hand while throwing the slap. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or not, but uh, that's not something that's allowed here, and I don't know if Rocky realizes it. Uh, it, it really leads to a club in most cases, so it looks like Rocky is now going to suffer another penalty, and that's going to change the complexion of this match yet again. This is the 10th round, but Ricky gets two shots. All right, now Ricky. Sorry, one shot, one shot. This is the last the one. crowd here, is guys. very tense here, guys. Ricky has one final slap, and I have to tell you, the audience is behind him. If Rocky Moore can eat this slap, this will go to the judges' scorecards. Oh, that was a great slap, but that doesn't show us a clear winner. So we're going to go back down to the barrel. We're going to look at the judges' scorecards and see who has won this match. The last pairing of these two fighters was a split decision, and it was a win for Ricky based on penalties. This was a back-and-forth battle, ladies and gentlemen. We had a lot of options.
obstacles. They both overcame it. They both lasted the distance. Let's hear it for both fighters. We see the judges deliberating. This is a very, very close decision. It's anybody's game. Anytime the judges are taking pencil and paper and adding and subtracting, you know you've got a close fight on your hands. And it looks like we've got a decision here. Let's go back to the barrel. Obviously, this was a close one. We do have a winner. It is Rocky! Well, I have to say that I, for one, agree with that decision. That was a fantastic performance from Rocky Moore. And who knows, we may just have to see a rubber match of these two fighters. Rocky Moore with an exciting win for himself. His return to slap fight has been incredible. And now he is undoubtedly going to have a post-fight interview that we will remember for a long time. Well, Rocky, that was a crazy fight. There was a lot going on there. It's a lot of club, a lot of stepping, a lot of flinching. I mean, they, everything. So what, what do you think, what do you attribute that to? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just got hit in the head. I don't know. Out of practice, man. Right on, man. Well, you got anybody you want to give a shout out to? My wife. Your wife? Was she here? Say hi. Hi, Rocky's wife. Well, you earned this one. That was a hard fought one. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your wife. Rocky, the winner! Tonight's main event showcases the 2022 Armageddon Super Heavyweight Tournament Champion, The Hulk. The Hulk faces good friend and slap fight people's champion, Frank the Tank, in a non-title matchup to determine which super heavyweight moves one step closer to a rematch with The Bell, the last fighter to defeat both Missouri natives. Fighting out of Bloomfield, Missouri. He's fighting out of Team Hulk and weighing in at 307 pounds. He is the one, the only Hulk! Oh, I'm so excited about our main event tonight. The Hulk, ladies and gentlemen. The Hulk is a 300 pound super heavyweight from Bloomfield, Missouri which is basically a local fighter here at the Inn at Grand Glaze in the Lake of the Ozarks. These people absolutely love the Hulk, but the Hulk doesn't care. He is here to fight. Yeah, the Hulk does look like the big show, but the Hulk would knock the big show on his ass. The Hulk is here to take away the momentum of Frank the Tank so that he can make his way back to the super heavyweight title contendership. Making his way onto the platform now, ladies and gentlemen, the Hulk.
He weighed in at 265 pounds. He is Frank the The most popular fighter in the history of Slap Fight Championship, Frank the Tank. Frank is a veteran of 18 slap fights, more than any other competitor on the planet. Frank is the people's champion here at Slap Fight Championship, and the people absolutely love him. He made his debut at Slap Fight during our very first event as an amateur, and is now nearly 20 fight professional veteran. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with our main event of Slap Fight Championship 20. It's Frank the Tank, the legend, on the left side, and the Hulk on the right. As always, your lead official, Kyron Bowen, with the coin toss. Quick rules meeting with both of these competitors, neither of which needs a rules meeting. All right, that's it. It looks like the coin toss goes to Frank the Tank. And the Hulk will now find out if he can eat these shots from Frank. One, two, Frank the Tank with a big shot, and the Hulk goes face first into the mat. Oh my gosh! This crowd is on its feet, and the Hulk is upset. Frank the Tank with a staggering blow in round one, a show of sportsmanship. And now the Hulk is going to take his break and try to recover in time to get back to the mat, to the action. Excuse me. Frank the Tank is back at the barrel. The Hulk is staggering in his corner. He's having a hard time keeping on his feet. I don't know if that's because the Hulk is hurt or if that's because he wore his dad's cowboy boots tonight. All right. The Hulk is stepping back to the barrel here. A couple more deep breaths. Frank the Tank is in the zone, and now it is time for Frank to decide if he can eat these slaps from the Hulk. Holy smokes. The Hulk checks his placement. Here's your windup. Oh, a big shot, and Frank eats it. Frank is back at the barrel, and the Hulk doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. Here's your windup. A big shot from Frank. Okay, and it looks like lead official Kyron Bowen. We have a club warning against he's gonna, Frank the Tank. He's going to give Frank a warning here for clubbing. I agree. Look at the face of Frank the Tank. He absolutely loves slap fighting. Last night, last night at the slap fight weigh-ins, Frank shared with the commission that he didn't feel well and they gave him the opportunity to withdraw from the fight and he said, there's no way. He said, I would fight with COVID. I wanna be clear he doesn't have COVID, but that's funny. All right, here we go. Frank the Tank's gonna take another big shot from the Hulk. The Hulk checks his placement. It, and here's the windup, oh. round two. two three, oh, a big four. shot and Frank eats it. In his last contest, Frank fought for the heavyweight title, lost to Darius the Destroyer and he wants his way back. Wow! Frank lost to Darius the Destroyer in three rounds by TKO, and he wants the rematch. In the Hulk's last appearance at the barrel, he fought the bell for the super heavyweight title and lost by TKO as well. These two fighters are both making a pathway back to the title shot, and they each need a win over the other tonight at Slap Fight 20.
the Hulk in round three squaring One, off. Two, three. Oh! A big shot from the Hulk, and Frank is dazed. Frank felt that slap. He's going to step back over here to the corner. The audience is telling Frank to take his break. Frank is very, very popular with these folks here in Missouri. The Hulk is telling Frank, let's go. These two slappers love to fight, and this is a fantastic main event. Here we go. Oh, Frank with another bomb. The Hulk is still on his feet, but that one he felt. The Hulk has 60 seconds to catch his breath, regain his composure, and step back to the barrel. Frank the Tank putting in some good work, but again, this is Slap Fight Championship, and anything can happen. Both of these slappers are super heavyweight and heavyweight contenders, and this is anybody's fight. a lot of mixed energy here in the event center. Very popular fighters in a fantastic firefight. Bottom of round four. Here we go, Hulk. Oh! The Hulk knocks one of the gauges out of Frank's ears. Turns Frank's neck just a little bit. Frank's just taking a deep breath here. Is he going to take a break? The audience is telling Frank to take a break. He's not going to. He's going to swing here. Oh! The round five slap from Frank. Staggers the Hulk again, but the Hulk eats it. Show sportsmanship from both fighters here. These two fighters are actually good friends. Last night after the weigh-ins, they had dinner together. You can cut the tension in this room with a knife. Giant men here, big swings. Oh! Wow! Unbelievable chin on Frank and on the Hulk. These guys are throwing some big, big meat tonight. Frank the Tank squaring up. Here's your wind up. Oh my God! And the Hulk eats another huge shot from Frank the Tank. Holy smokes! I don't see either of these fighters withdrawing from the matchup at this point. Tough, tough guys. The Hulk was the super heavyweight and the heavyweight champion in both of our mixed martial arts leagues for about five straight years. A very tough guy. And we all know Frank the Tank is one of the toughest. Oh, my God. That's the hardest slap of the fight so far. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. We got a stepping warning on the hook. Okay, our guest announcer, Dallin Getling, has just announced a stepping violation, a warning on the hook. Oh, no. Okay, I suspect that Kyron Bowen's going to have a conversation with the Hulk about flinching. Not only did he flinch, but that slap landed flush and hurt him. We have a flinch warning on the Hulk. Okay, a little flinch by the Hulk. They're going to count that as a warning. If he flinches again, he will lose a turn. And I can tell you that would not be good in this particular matchup. All right, here we go. Round seven. All right, clean slap, not a lot of power. Unbelievable competitors, fantastic fight. The crowd is going wild. Oh, a 
and Frank the Tank with another slobber knocker. Wow. Looks like Frank the Tank overheating just a little bit. The Hulk rallying the crowd here. A lot of fans for both fighters here. Here we are at the bottom of round eight. Oh my gosh, another good shot from the Hulk. You know, we've seen Frank in the past with a strategy that involves him moving away from the barrel. He's decided to not do that tonight, and he is eating these slaps. Frank the Tank has something to prove. He wants to make his way back to the title, and this is a big mountain to climb. Here we go, round nine. Another good slap, but it looked like the Hulk may have moved out of the way just a little bit. The officials are discussing it. Okay, I think they're going to let that stand. We are close to the end of this main event. This has been a back and forth fight with lots of power. It is anybody's match. Two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, but also two of the scariest guys you'll ever meet. All right, the Hulk's going to go ahead and square up. He's winding up. And that was a fantastic slap. Turned off the lights just for a second. We've got one more round of this beatdown. Let's hear it. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but there's an awful lot of people in the crowd with some crazy advice for these fighters. I hope they don't take any of it. Here we go, final round, Frank the Tank. And another shot from Frank. That'll close out the fight for Frank, and now the Hulk has an opportunity. This is the final slap of Slap Fight Championship 20. And at this point, it is anybody's match. The Hulk checks his placement. Look at the face of Frank the Tank. And a fantastic shot, and Frank goes back. Holy smokes. Frank almost went down. That's going to be a knockdown for the Hulk, and that's going to be the end of this main event. Oh, my. What a fight. Wow! The 200 fans here at Slap Fight 20 are going crazy, and the judges have their work cut out for them. This has been a night of razor thin split decisions, competitive fights, and I have no idea who's won this fight. The judges are deliberating. Unbelievable performances tonight. Frank the Tank and the Hulk, without a doubt, the fight of the night on a night full of incredible fights. The judges are still deliberating. I can see the judges adding up the scores. They're looking at the penalties. They're looking at the power shots. There's a lot to be considered in a fight like this. This is a very high stakes fight for both of these players. This could potentially be a draw. It may be a draw. Look at the face of Frank the Tank, a little bit of swelling, a lot of swelling on the Hulk. You can cut the tension in this room with a knife. The bad news, there has to be a loser. The good news, there is a winner. That is tonight, the Hulk! And the Hulk does it! 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Hulk walks away with a split decision victory over Frank the Tank, and I can't believe it. What a main event tonight at Slap Fight 20. Wow. Our presentation model, Carrie, will have a quick photo with the Hulk, and then we'll go back to the barrel to Dallin Getling for the post-fight interview. That was amazing. You know, the first thing is that the very first shot, man, you were, you were rocked. You were down. And I was thinking, no way, the power that you guys both have, if one of you guys would have been down like that, that you would withstand nine more rounds. But you did. You didn't stumble again. <sighs> uh, Frank's a tough dude. Me and him are like, we're, we're good friends. I respect him. And he's a hell of a fighter. I love th this was my favorite because two beasts going at it, great sportsmanship. Man, I, I don't know how you guys could take the shots, let alone deliver them, but very impressive. Guys, was this like the best fight of the night? That was, a, that was awesome. So I want to give you a chance to give a shout out to anybody you want to. Uh, just people love me, my family, keep me going strong, my daughter, um, and everyone that's there for me. I appreciate it. Hang in there because I'll be back. Right on, brother. Congratulations. Hard fought win. Thank you, man. The Hulk! You guys, check us out on all the social media. Slap Fight Championship. Thank you so much for being here live. Catch you next time. All right, friends. Thanks for watching Slap Fight Championship 20. What an unbelievable night of American slap fighting. We saw some incredible battles tonight, some big knockouts, quite a few upsets, and I can't wait for the next show. Please like and subscribe on all social media and look out for some big, big announcements from Slap Fight Championship in the coming weeks. Tonight, the fight of the night, without a doubt, Frank the Tank versus the Hulk. The knockout of the night will be decided tonight, and we will post on our social media for all of you. What a great fight. My name is JT Tilly. I want to thank you once again for supporting the growth of American Slap Fighting and watching Slap Fight Championship 20. Good night, everybody. Yeah.